Ladies and gentlemen, I was wrong. It's a good day when you can admit that you were wrong, and today is one of those days. We're talking about the Goblin Queen epic quest. And although I stand by what I said about releasing an epic quest in 2024 with no tier 4 materials, I still think that's wrong. I still think releasing Exodus as tier 2 is wrong, and I still think giving Cyclops a tier 4 with no uniform was wrong. There are other things about this epic quest that I can appreciate, and I had a very interesting conversation on Discord tonight that triggered this opinion. I think this is one of the best epic quests, and I think it's actually the best epic quest for a certain player base. Now, it's not going to be the epic quest that's best for every single player. I know that for sure. However, it does have its advantages, and it is better in some ways than other epic quests. And let me start off by saying that it's essentially always the case that the newest epic quest is the best in some way and for some players, much in the same respect that we always suggest to players, hey, you know what? Don't worry about building the characters from last year. Build the characters from this year. There's always some power creep. And we always say, of course, don't worry about the old uniforms. Just get the newest uniform for the character because newest is almost always certainly going to be a little bit stronger. So if we take a look at the other epic quests, and in particular, I want to make a pretty strong comparison between the Rise of the X-Men epic quest, because the rewards are very similar with uh, X-Men materials being in the quests, you know, Phoenix Feathers and m -Cron Crystals, and then, of course, this new Goblin Queen quest. But, of course, in addition to that, you have a native Tier 2 female character who dominates PvP, and then you have a native Tier 2 female character who dominates PvP. And then, of course, they're also mutants. So if we take a look at these two epic quests, um, for especially for newer players, I actually think the Goblin Queen epic quest is just straight up better. And I'll explain why. The other epic quests, and in particular this one, despite having arguably the best character in the game, Jean Grey, the other characters are not worthwhile. Although they all have tier 4 now, they're not worthwhile until A, you get them up to tier 3 or tier 380 in the case of Cyclops, and you buy their newest uniform. So if you take the epic quest from that position, because you're not gonna you're not gonna tier four a naked Wolverine, right? You're not gonna tier four this guy right here. You know, you're not gonna tier four this guy. You're not gonna tier four Magneto with this with this one right here. You know what I'm saying? So if you take it from that position, uh, that you have to expend an additional tenth, uh, 1,050 crystals, then the cost of these two epic quests is actually surprisingly similar, right? Because it's 7,700 for Hope, and that's it. Right? None of these characters have uniforms, I mean, in the Epic Quest. Obviously, Cyclops and Cable have uniforms, and, and Rachel has a uniform outside of the Epic Quest. But none of the uniforms, right, um, are making these characters uh, that you're getting through the Epic Quest uh, better, right? There's no uniform for Havoc, there's no uniform for Hope, and there's no uniform for Madeline. Whereas with Jean, with Wolverine, with Cyclops, well, not, not Cyclops, Magneto, right? All these cats need uniforms. On top of the fact, and think about this one, Three of these five characters at the bottom here have seasonal uniforms. Rogue, Magneto, and Storm. That's insane. Three out of five, 60%, have uniforms that you can only obtain at a certain time. So my advice to you, if you're looking at which Epic Quest to spend, and by the way, do not be buying any Epic Quest Deluxe packs until there's a crystal spending event. Okay, wait for a crystal spending event, please. But if you're looking and you didn't buy Magneto's seasonal uniform, even if you have rogues and storms, I would say, you know what? Buy Hope Summers. And the reason I say buy Hope Summers is because she doesn't need a uniform. She's a leadership like Magneto for mutants. She has a support artifact, unlike Magneto, also for all mutants. So she's a lead and a support. There's no uniform. And you get to farm more feathers and crystals and gold than you would from the Magneto epic quest. Versus if you buy the Magneto Deluxe Pack and you didn't get his seasonal, you're sitting with a lame duck character, your tier 2 Magneto, for 11 months. You have to wait until next December 2024 to buy this uniform. And then he'll be good. Okay, but in the meantime, Alex, I can build up Wolverine. Yes, and? Wolverine's not the best combat hero for any PvE content. Moon Knight and Black Panther have seen to that. He's only going to be best for PvP, and you need his artifact for that. Who does that sound like? It sounds like Madeline. On the other hand, for her epic quest, when you unlock her, you're also getting yourself Havoc. Havoc, as we covered in his video, is an amazing PvE Tier 3 character. He probably only has meme-worthy value for PvP with this ignore uh, iframe skill, but still very easy to play, very proc-friendly, and functionally very strong and covers a more coveted role as a blast hero. 
rather than combat. So Havoc sort of has Wolverine beat in value at tier three, especially considering you don't need to buy a uniform to get Havoc, whereas you need a uniform to enable Wolverine to be anything but useless. And I know it hurts me to say that, but that's honestly the truth. So when you start to add things up that way, you're like, huh, you're actually kind of getting more value on top of the fact that you can get Exodus now because you bought Hope, who gives you an additional support for all mutants. Huh. So you get two supports and you get two leaderships because Havoc and Hope are both leads. You get two supports, two leaderships in the form of three characters, and then you get Madeline. Now, I'm not going to sit here and argue that Madeline is a better PvP character than Jean. I'm not. She's very good. She's, in my opinion, she's top five worthy according to Commander's video, but I wouldn't say she's better than Jean. So she, Jean has her beat in PvP. And of course, by a, by a country mile, Jean has her beat in PvE for now. If Madeline gets her tier four in the next six months, she's probably going to overtake Jean in one of those two categories, if not both. She does have the disadvantage of having a PvP only artifact. So that sort of locks her out of some value and that sort of lowers her ceiling in PvE. And she also has the disadvantage of being a blast type, which means she doesn't generate as much value overall as the uh, universals do, you know, which is with Jean's uh, Dark Phoenix uniform uh, for PvE content, right? Because as we know, universals get that insane damage to all typings but universals. And we know universals have no weakness, so this is basically a win-win. There's no, there's no uh, penalty or drawback there. You don't get as much of a, uh, an advantage versus combat types, but really the only combat type she has to worry about at the moment is Wolverine. There's Carnage and Hulk waiting in the wings, but they're not really up to par these days for the top, top, top tier of PvP metas. So Madeline is still doing a really good job. She absolutely needs her artifact, of course, whereas Jean doesn't. So I wouldn't make the argument again that Madeline is better than Jean, but she's way too close for it to be anything but a fair fight, right? You can't just dismiss Madeline as a bad character. Is she is she better than pretty much all of the other uh, epic? Like, is she better than Molecule Man? By a country mile on that dude's tier three, right? Is she better than... This guy who's stuck at tier two, sadly, yes. And the list goes on and on, right? So if you look at it from this point of view, not to mention, right? Not to mention, look at this. You have three runs on these two stages, right? You get three runs here and you get three runs here. That means you have six runs to farm feathers and crystals. You do get a little bit of extra gold as well. And then you have two runs here. You can't see it, my camera's blocking. So in total, you get eight runs a day to farm feathers. You go ahead and compare that to the X-Men Epic Quest. That's not the X-Men Epic Quest. And you get your two runs here for Magneto, right? But then you only get four runs here. Curious, I know. Yeah, you actually get two fewer runs. Now that might not seem like a lot, but that's gonna add up over time, over days, over weeks, over months. And it's also, it's not just X-Men materials that you're losing out on, it's also gold. Right, because extra runs means extra, extra gold. They fixed this in the Deadpool epic quest. So if you compare these ones, they have the same number of missions. You have two here for Psylocke, and then you have three and three for Cable and Strife. But this epic quest is by far much worse than the Hope one because Deadpool's useless, Domino got a uniform and it didn't matter, Psylocke is sort of useless, Cable's really good, but he's in both epic quests, Domino's useless, or Phantom X is useless. Colossus is just a support, uh, and supports are not as valuable as they used to be. And then Strife is very good, don't get me wrong, but Madeline sort of has him beat. Besides for maybe other world battle in terms of overall value, but you can still use Wasp for that, or Exodus, to be frank, if you're going to run a, a mutant team. So I don't really think this epic quest uh, you know, matches up to either this one, or frankly this one. So now that I've kind of explained that, I want to go over who this epic quest is not best for. So, cause I've made, in my opinion, I've made a pretty good, a pretty strong argument that this is the best epic quest for new players, for a lot of returning players, but it's not the best for every type of player. So who is it not best for? In my opinion, it's not best for people who obviously really love the characters here. That goes without saying, always build your favorites, but also players who are able to rapidly advance a lot of these characters that you see here and also have picked up key seasonal uniforms. So if you're, for whatever reason, the type of player who always buys seasonal uniforms, but then you take long breaks from the game, I know it seems like a weird niche of players, but they do exist, okay? Let's say you have uh, Magneto and Rogue, but you don't have Storm, whatever. 
even with that being the case, if you've got Magneto Seasonal and you got Rogue Seasonal and you're thinking, which Epic Quest should I get? Yeah, you should absolutely go with this one. I know it'd be weird to buy Magneto Seasonal without getting his, his Deluxe Pack Epic Quest, but the fact that this game lets you buy uniforms for characters you don't own is already mega stupid, and that's on the developer's fault, not on the player's fault. I don't fault the players for that. That's sort of a, uh, you know, decision-making uh, problem. But, um, yeah, in those situations, right, if you have the Tier 4 materials to throw around and you want to build new Tier 4s, you've got plenty, right? Literally every character you see here can be taken to Tier 4. So if you're sitting on a bunch of Tier 4 materials, you're sitting on a pile of resources, you're like, hmm, what should I do with my 1 billion gold and my 10,000 carbonadium? Go nuts. You're going to have more fun here. You're going to have a higher ceiling here. You can build up a character for PvP like Wolverine you, or Gene. You can build up a character like Rogue or Magneto or Storm for PV. You can build up Cyclops as a meme, right? You have your options. Whereas with this one, you're stuck at Tier 3 and you're stuck at Tier 2. And so you're probably going to run out of things to do a little bit sooner. It also has a little bit more. It has also has a few more roadblocks because you have to build extra characters instead of five, right? You have seven. So it does sort of slow you down a little bit more. I do still think it's one of the easiest epic quests, in my opinion, to complete it. It did seem quite easy. And especially since they focused for the most part on Kid Omega and Cyclops rank ups, they do bring in Exodus later. But the other epic quests stop you very soon, asking you to build up the 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 bio subscription character right away you know they stop you with a, a need three star victorious really early in the dr doom quest they do the same thing for colossus etc exodus comes relatively later uh relatively late in the epic quest here for madeline so you can get through most of it um before that happens so yeah that's kind of that's kind of my take it's an interesting take i know some people are going to call me a hypocrite when they see this video uh, they're going to say, you know, you're just content, you're just outrage farming, and then you go back and say, oh, I was wrong, and blah, 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 blah. But I, I think this is a more nuanced take, and it's one that I think coexists with what I've already said about the Epic Quest. Uh, I think this could have been one of the best updates ever if they had just shipped the update with a uniform for Cyclops, a Tier 3 for Exodus, and a Tier 4 for Madeline. Would it have shifted the game more dramatically? It, it, you know, faster maybe than the devs want? Yeah, probably. Would some players have disliked that? It shifted the game so much and it and it uh, put such a pressure to get tier fours? Yeah, maybe. And you know what? Maybe other content creators, other players would be like, this update sucks because they didn't want very strong tier fours and they didn't want a big meta shift. I personally prefer those things, but I also can see it from both sides, which is why I think a, a nuanced opinion um, is absolutely, uh, you know, a possibility in this space. So, yeah. That's what I think. More importantly, I'm curious to hear what you think. Do you think I've made a good argument for why this is a really good epic quest for certain players? Or do you still think players should just no-brainer, pick this one, Jean Grey all the way, just put the car in drive and, and press on the gas um, and, you know, whatever else? Hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. Smash the like button and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Hey! Fucking hell.